So welcome, Steve, to Escape the Rat Race Radio. How are you today? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Christian. And thanks for inviting me. You're very, very welcome. Now, we're both under the, the British sunshine today, but where exactly in the world are you right now? I'm in uh, West London, Ricelip in West London. Fantastic. Now, Steve, we've connected recently over the last few months and had some really interesting conversations. And so I felt it was really, really pertinent to invite you onto the show today because you are the career catalyst. You have many, many years experience of working with people, frustrated employees who are ready to take, as you say in your own words, that leap of faith out of the corporate life and into the world of entrepreneurship, self-employment and starting up a business. So why don't you just introduce yourself and give us a little bit of more of a background about your history, Steve. Yes, thanks, Christian. Well, uh, I suppose a good starting point would be my background is actually the travel industry, um, where I worked uh, for 30 odd years or so in in, uh, a number of key um, players in the travel industry, such as Thomas Cook, British Airways, going places. And when I actually look back, it's interesting because arguably I changed career multiple times within the travel industry. It's only when you actually go through your own ultimate career transition and you realise that um, uh, within your career, you've had multiple careers, if you like, then it actually makes it easier to change careers later on, maybe. Um, But uh, I did all aspects. I mean, my main um, focus was in sales and operations. I became a a director of what was then Pickford's Travel uh, at a very young age, in my early 30s. And I grew my career uh, within what became a a merged and bigger company uh, until I actually got to the point of realisation that maybe um, I'd had enough, it was time to get out. What I was doing was no longer what I was in tune with, nothing to do with travel. And arguably I could have been doing anything um, because uh, you know, I didn't have to be in a travel company. I was in operations, HR, project management, you name it, I'd done a bit of everything. Um, and then um, the uh, decision was made for me because the company moved up north. They offered me to, in their words, uh, come and live in Rochdale like a king. And I decided that maybe I wanted to live where I wanted, how I wanted, uh, and not be beholden to an employer. And that was a career defining moment for me. So having had a really uh, successful management career and senior management career, um, I decided uh, to take the money and run and escape the rat race. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've touched on a point there, which I think is, you know, is something that is in many employees minds, people listening right now, you may be in a job, you may have been in that job for a long time, and you may have worked yourself up the corporate ladder, so to speak. However, there is no such thing as job safety these days. And you really can walk into work tomorrow, and the boss can call you in and say, you've been a great servant. However, you know, we can't keep you any longer. And, th- and we know there's so many people that have, have shared that story. And you can be in quite a scary place when that happens. So from your experience, Steve, you know, tell us about some of, some of the stories of people who've been faced with that. And then, you know, what's been the next step for them? Well, yes, uh, I mean, a great question, Christian, because for some people, it, it's hugely scary and um, threatening. Um, and I realise that, uh, I mean, I was fortunate because uh, I was already decided I wanted to get out anyway. So I got out with uh, a good package. A lot of other people don't get that opportunity. Uh, but regardless, it's, it's about shifting that mindset to see things as an opportunity rather than a threat, which is very difficult when your monthly um, pay packet is being taken away from you. Um, so that's one of the key things that, that I learned early on is that you, you have to shift the mindset. You've got to see things from a different perspective. And with so many people, I mean, what, what happened in my journey is I ended up on a program for out of work professionals and executives, which is how I got into this work by accident rather than design, uh, because I was on a program of career and personal development and fell in love with it and actually thought, you know what, this is something I can do. Um, and 
that's another thing I learned about the importance of being opportunistic because uh, at the end of the program, I spoke to the uh, managing director of the consultancy running the program and uh, I gave him some feedback and I said, well, it's a great program. However, I feel you can improve it in a number of ways for which they were very grateful. Um, and they said, right, okay, well, if that's the case, you know, maybe you can help us. Um, and one thing led to another. And before I knew it, I'd helped them completely rewrite and redesign their whole career and personal development program. Um, and by accident, rather than design, I sort of fell into becoming one of their um, career coaches. And then I immersed myself in it because that's something I learned on my journey, Christian. If you're going to do something different and um, uh, you're going to do it well, you know, you've got to do your research. You've got to live it, feel it, breathe it and so on. And I absolutely immersed myself into the whole world of um, career and personal development. I found gurus such as uh, people like Brian Tracy, who are great inspiration to me. Um, and... Uh, I went to seminars and, and um, I, I sought people who I trusted and valued their opinions and so on. Um, and I learned that in order to make a successful change, you, you, you have to be proactive, you have to be very positive. Um, and you've got to, um, uh, say, seek out opportunities. Um, so many people just get negative and down on themselves because even if you choose to make a, a career change it's your choice rather than the rug being pulled um you're still going to go through this emotional roller coaster ride because it isn't easy as you know christian and the end game is worth it but for a lot of people get stuck along the way um and if you like stuck in this career transition maze and it's too scary so they give up. Um, I mean, uh, it, you, you can't say how long it's going to take. That's another thing I learned. Um, there's no right or wrong. And what a lot of people will do nowadays, and I think it's a very good strategy, depends obviously what work you do, is to build up something alongside your existing employment. So that by the time you really do want to escape the rat race, you've got something already lined up maybe not in totality but there's something there that, that you can make happen yeah um and the biggest challenge that most people have which i'm sure you've come across time and time again christian is people uh it's their fears they're frightened to take that leap they're frightened um of failure it's, it's a fear of failure it's a fear of maybe not earning enough the fear of um, so many different aspects that it just becomes all consuming. So they retreat back into their comfort zone. And instead of actually uh, making that uh, transition, they spend their life forever um, in compromise and thinking, what if? Uh, from my perspective, the biggest sin in life is not fulfilling your true potential. And as you now know, Christian, there are so many people out there who are aspiring business owners who could be absolutely brilliant at something in their own right, but they just hold themselves back because of these fears. So one of the biggest things I learned is, is that you have to overcome these fears. And, uh, I, you know, I'm a very curious sort of person. And uh, after I've been doing this work for a while, I started to get to think, well, why is it some people seem to make seamless transitions and other people struggle? Um, and I started doing a bit of research and analysis and mapped it against my own journey and other clients' journeys. Uh, and that's when I developed what I call my six-step career navigation cycle. Um, because I realized that there is a definite process to be able to make um, uh, a successful career transition. And albeit it's a, a loose structure, there's no one size fits all, but people need something to be able to measure their, their progress. Um, and that gives people a, you know, what, what people describe as practical hope. So it gives them the confidence to, to really move forward. Um, and um, 
you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you said about case studies, well, a, a brilliant example recently, um, uh, you know, somebody on LinkedIn, I saw their uh, um, profile pop up with a, a new job title. And when I looked at it closely, this was a, a previous client of mine, it was evident that they were actually running their own consultancy now. So first thing I did was congratulate them. And uh, I mean, the reality was when I was working with them probably eight, nine years ago, they knew they should have done that. But what held them back again was that fear. Um, and uh, having contacted them, said, congratulations, I take it this is your breakthrough now. They came back very quickly and said, yes, um, sometimes it just needs the guts to take the leap. And basically, they 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 were saying that they wish they'd done it years before, and having done it, you know what? Maybe it wasn't as drastic as I thought it might be. Yeah, you know, and, that, so. and and that is so often the case, isn't it, Steve? And you know, I I know that myself. It, this journey has been a long journey. You know, Escape the Rat Race is is only into its fourth year, but my personal journey goes back many, many years before that. And when I first discovered personal development, the first mentor, which I refer to is Jim Rohn, um, it, just listening to audios. And I've listened yeah. to Jim for, for many years. And that leads to, as you said, these are the gurus like Anthony Robbins, Brian Tracy and Jack Canfield and, and so many modern day gurus, shall we yeah. say now, who really, there are no new fundamentals Jim Rohn used to always say that you know that ultimately and I and I I always refer back to think and grow rich you know that really laid it down and everything that was in think and grow rich which was published in like the 1930s or somewhere around then you know everything we hear today is really a, a, a kind of you know just a, a a new way of looking or a new approach to to address those fundamentals but as you say things like fear and just being really clear about your burning desire you know ultimately that hasn't changed. You need to be clear about what it is you're passionate about, what it is you love. And then you do need to have some strategies and know how to identify when fear is holding you back. So for people listening now, Steve, everything you've just said, I'm sure they're going, yes, yes, yes. You know, yes, I know I've got these limiting beliefs. I know there's things holding me back. I know I should have done this years ago. So let's dig into that. The, the how you know have you got some tips and maybe some of those six steps that you can maybe elaborate on in a little more detail someone listening now can actually use that and say okay right how do i break through this barrier that i'm just putting up in front of myself yeah uh, great question christian i mean the, the obvious first thing is the first step from my perspective and step one of my six step process is letting go and looking forward and that's the challenge for so many people christian they're, they're always focusing either on the here and now or in the past. And um, it's getting people to shift their mindset so they can see possibility. And instead of uh, thinking, I can't do this because, I mean, so many times I've, I've worked with clients and, and they said, well, I don't think I'm gonna do this because how do I know it's gonna work? And my answer to that will be reframe. I think that's a key strategy in the whole process is uh, in, in letting go is reframing. So well, what if it does work? How cool would that be? Just imagine um, the benefits if uh, uh, some of these things do work and then, you know, where's that going to take you? So it, it really is, the, it starts with uh, changing your thinking and that, that sort of leads into uh, this whole process, uh, which I now call the toolkit for life, which um, I developed as a result of um, um, a, a loose version of the uh, law of cause and effect. You know, for every cause, there's an effect and so on. But it's very definitely that if you change your thinking, then you change your beliefs. And once you change your beliefs, then you change your behaviours and so on. It's like a domino effect. And ultimately, you then will change your life but if you're constantly in this um, world of uh, limiting beliefs that you're stopping yourself moving forward you know because you can't do xyz and it's constant but 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 and it's all negative then nothing's ever going to change um, and it's the old adage unless you change nothing will change 
I've got a client like that at the moment, you know, and it's so frustrating. They almost want you to wave the magic wand for them, um, you know. Uh, but there is no magic wand. There is no holy grail. I say this time and time again. You have to work through this stuff, as you know, Christian, and it's hard work and determination that, and yeah. taking positive action. Yeah. And, and World of Anthony Robbins taking that massive positive action. Um, that's what ultimately makes a difference. So let me ask you then, Steve, like, can you develop an entrepreneur's mindset? You know, if you've been an employee and you've just been so used to just following a set of rules and, you know, turning up at a certain time and getting your work done and then going home, forgetting all about it. And you've done that for so many years. You just, you know, that's the way of life. And then one day you wake up and say, Hey, I don't want to do this any longer. You know, there's something more within me. Uh, I've got a real passion to actually sort of change the world or help people whatever it might be but as you said you step outside of that comfortable life that you've been living in terms of employment and then realize oh wow there's so many things that I just don't know how to do and when it comes to running a business and actually now getting my own customers and even working out who is my customer just so many things to think about can you develop that entrepreneur's mindset is that can be that be taught or is that ingrained in people well it's another great question christian i think it's a bit of both i mean uh clearly some people have a natural entrepreneurial talent entrepreneurial flair and you'll see that through their corporate life which is um quite often why they rise to where they do in the organization uh, however it's my belief that anyone can have um, uh, the power and the, and the thinking to become an entrepreneur and i've seen that time and time again with different people not just with clients but friends and so on and people who you thought well they're the last person in the world i mean um you know my my best mate don who unfortunately is no longer with us um, I never thought in a million years he would uh, set up his own business when uh, he lost his job many years ago. Um, and he ended up uh, in his own way. You know, I mean, I think, you know, I think uh, the, even the term entrepreneur frightens a lot of people, doesn't it, Christian? Um, but I think being an entrepreneur uh, means different things to different people. But anyone in my world who basically is prepared to take themselves out of their comfort zone and challenge themselves and do stuff they've never done before and earn a living out of it, to me, that's being entrepreneurial. Uh, and within a short space of time, he was, uh, he had multiple income streams. Um, you know, he wasn't earning a fortune because he was doing gardening, he was doing training, and he was doing, uh, eventually I networked him into this sort of work. So he, he had a, a number of strands. And then later on, something else that was, um, it was very entrepreneurial. He, he developed uh, his passion. And we talked, you mentioned about passions, um, Christian. And to my mind, that's really important. You know, do what you love, because then uh, if you're passionate about it, people can see your passion and people buy people, in which case that's how you win business. Uh, but he had a real passion for magic. And he fought against it for years. Everybody said, uh, you could turn this into a really good income stream and make good money out of it. And he fought against it for a long, long time. Uh, and then one day he just relented and he turned magic into an income stream for him. Um, now, from my perspective, I think he could have developed that even further. And I wish in some respects he had done because I think he could have done um, uh, corporate events, big, big events where, you know, there would have been loads of people there and a big opportunity to earn good money, really good money, doing something he loved. But again, he wanted to do it smaller scale. So, you know, that was his choice. And that's another thing I've learned through my journey, Christian, and working with hundreds or thousands of clients since, is that everybody has choice. They may not they may not believe that at this moment in time, but it's an absolute fact. You have the choice to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, and in, and in the way you want. Um, and of course, that's where things like the portfolio career have evolved massively, which is something I'm very passionate about, as you know. 
Yeah. And my, my third book is all about portfolio careers and the three P's, as I call them, of working for passion, pleasure and profit. Okay, well, let me let me just jump in there, Steve, before you roll into the three P's, because I want you to talk about the books, because, you know, you have um, positioned yourself as the career catalyst. And, you know, I'm really keen to find out, you know, how how you went about kind of identifying and at what stage you realized that, you know, you really had this skill to help people and, and branded yourself the career catalyst. And, and then how did that lead into you becoming an author? When did you know was the right time? And what was the message that you really wanted to get across? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, uh, Christian, because um, what actually happened was that, um, uh, like a lot of people, I, 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 I had a book inside of me. Um, I used to do a lot of writing many years ago, and most of my writing became, you know, pretty standard, boring business writing. Um, and I wanted to write a book that was going to make a difference. And once I really got um, in tune with this stuff and, and uh, developed all sorts of coaching programs, online programs and so on, people said to me, Steve, you, you, you need to write a book. You've got to get this stuff out. You've got to share it with the universe, if you like. And my initial reaction was, well, what am I going to write about and where do I start? You know, it's like anything, isn't it? It's like when you're looking to become a business owner, where do I start? And then people said things that, thinking about it, were pretty obvious. They'd say, well, you've got all the material. You know, you've got it in your, in your master classes, in your coaching programs, and um, your, your six-step um, career navigation cycle process. And if it's not in that, it's up here in your head. So what you've got to do is to get this out. And I thought, yeah, they're probably right. But how the hell do you do that? Um, and then... You know, I went on a bit of a journey. I, did, I researched, I met various people. Um, and as with a lot of this stuff, it's all about networking and who you know and who they know. And I ended up on a, a course um, which was um, all about, um, uh, not so much about writing a book, but about different options for publishing a book. And a really bizarre thing happened because... On that day, I, I invited somebody I'd met along the way uh, who I, I really asked would be my, my illustrator. She was a, um, a fledgling artist. Um, and um, unbeknown to me, sitting behind me was a writer's coach who somebody had already said uh, previously, you really need to meet this person, Steve. Neither of us knew that we were going to be there. And the guy who was actually running the course, um, he was an amazing guy and I was really inspired by him. So I came away thinking, yes, I'm going to write this book. I've got an illustrator. Uh, and by the end of that day, I'd uh, found myself the, the, the writer's coach. So I had somebody who could help me on my journey. And then, um, long story, but uh, the guy running the course eventually became my publisher. So just by attending that one event, if you believe that things happen for a reason, Christian, my goodness me, <laughs> it was meant to be. Um, but even then, I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't know how to write a book. I don't know how to do all this. Anyway, um, I learned all the stuff like, like you do when you're, when you're setting up a business. You learn how to do all this stuff. And you're sure it takes time, investment in time and cost and energy. Um, but... I wrote my first book. I decided it was going to be focused on redundancy. Uh, it was winning through redundancy. Uh, and it re received such fantastic uh, acclaim all around the globe. I was absolutely blown away. But part of that journey, you know, as we all need mentors and coaches and so on, and I know you have and you mentor other people, um, I was also introduced to an amazing lady who was a publicist and come coach. And um, I'd never met this woman in my life. And she said, I'd like to see some of your work. So I, I gave her a sample of the book. And she said to me, Steve, I don't know you, but I love your writing. And I believe you've got five books in you in the next 10 years. I thought, oh my God. So I was completely 
blown away by that. And I thought this, this woman's worked with some top authors and, some, and, and helped celebrities write books as well. So I thought, my God, you know, if she's saying that, there must be some mileage in this. So um, it was mainly as a result of her where she said, Steve, what you need is a different brand. So you've got your company, which is SMP Solutions, Career People Development. Limited. It's obvious what you do there. It's all about specialist career people development stuff. But what you need is to create your own personal brand as an author and maybe speaker and, and leading career coach in your own right. And so what I did, um, I canvassed a, a, a lot of um, mixture of clients, uh, good contacts um, and friends. And I said, um, I need this sort of strap line, for want of a better word, in terms of how do I de describe myself um, in my personal brand? And I had all sorts of things came up, career architect, career doctor, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I wanted something that um, I could uh, trademark so it was unique. Um, and some of these were already trademarked, I found out. But then having explored even further um, and ruled stuff out, when I actually said to different people, I said, well, tell me, what, what is it you think I really do? And, uh, and it was, you know, a number of people said, well, Steve, you act as the catalyst for a change, for transition, for this, for that, whatever. Um, and that's how the career catalyst then came about. Um, and everybody said, no, that's absolutely right. And they loved it. Uh, so it, that, that became my personal brand, which uh, I now use as an author, as a speaker, and for people um, um, working directly with me uh, as, a, as a, um, a career coach. Yeah, that's fascinating, Steve. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, following on from that, I'd just love to share with, with all the escapees listening right now, you know, something that was shared to me by one of my mentors, Roger Hamilton, who's been a previous guest on uh, Escape the Rat Race Radio, is that there's three brands to think about. And you don't need to figure this out right at the beginning. Like you're not going to have the answers to all of them. But you've got your company brand. You then got your personal brand, which you talked about there, Steve. And then you have the product brand. So then that's your courses. That's your, you know, your books yeah. and, and, and your, your six step plans, you know, that, that comes and they might not always come in the same order. You might find your personal brand comes first and then the products follow. You might find you have a great product idea and you build the, the company brand around it. Um, but be aware there are those three brands. It's almost like a triangle connecting it all together. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and it's fascinating you say that Christian, because uh, something I resisted doing for years and people told me I should have done, uh, many years ago, uh, who knew me well, they said, uh, you know, you've got all this knowledge and expertise. So aside of speaking at seminars and so on, um, you know, why don't you actually run programs to coach and train aspiring and even existing career coaches to help them become better at what they do? Um, and I was very precious about that. And that's something else you learn, I think, as you... <laughs> Um, get more experience in this stuff. And I thought, well, no. Uh, and, uh, last year, I made that decision. Uh, you know what? It's time to do it. I've got three books behind me. I've got the kudos. I've got the expertise. And then a couple of clients actually said to me, would you coach and train me to do what you do? And I thought, wow, that's fantastic that people want me to do that. And a, and a fellow career coach said the same thing. So I ran a pilot program, um, and uh, and that's something I firmly believe in as well, that you should always test the water in different things. I think that's another mistake that people make. They try to jump in feet first sometimes and uh, without really testing the water. Anyway, the response uh, the, the was way beyond my wildest dreams. So I now have, as you say, I now have a new product which actually could take over uh, in terms of priority of pretty much everything else I do. So it, 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 it um, absolutely um, uh, accentuates what you're saying there, Christian, that things evolve. And, you know, people always say, well, it's about timing. You know, sometimes the timing isn't right for certain things. Maybe, maybe the timing wasn't right before, I don't know. 
but now the timing's right. So I've got this additional string to my bow, if you like, and, and it's re-energized me as well, which is fantastic. And fascinating. I've just literally written down uh, as a note here, Steve, you know, is there ever a right time? You know, people <laughs> always, you know, they'll be saying, well, look, I can't do it yet. You know, or I'm just waiting for a project to finish, which will be done in three months time, you know, uh, but there's never a right time, is no. there? No. no. So, what, you know, for someone listening right now, Steve, you know, they're, they're in that corporate lifestyle. They literally are working all the hours under the sun. They're stressed out. They're not spending enough time with their families. You know, you must come into contact with these people all the time. So, you know, Take us through the process. Someone listening now who's really, you know, that summarizes how life is right now, just really fed up and, and completely looking for a new direction. You know, those people who come to you, explain to us where you take them. What is, what is the, the, the process, the steps that, that you follow to help them get clarity, to help them decide, you know, which is the right direction to be looking in? And then what are those next steps? Okay, right. Well, very quick overview. Um, but essentially... The six steps are to let go and look forward. And uh, I sort of covered that a bit earlier, but, but some of that is about letting go of, of the baggage. Everyone carries baggage around with them, some shape or form. I mean, I've even had some people who, who, said, who said things as daft as, well, I don't want to, I, I really want to do this, but I don't want to um, lose contact with my colleagues because I really enjoy working them. Well, hello, you can meet them after work. You can meet them outside of work, you know. So there are, you know, you don't have to lose your um, work friends just because you move on and, and start something of your own. So everyone has to do a bit of letting go of something or other. And they have then got to start focusing and looking forward. And then it's all about, um, the step two is all about reevaluating. So what's important to you in your career and life and why? Um, success criteria, financial reevaluation, things like this. And a lot of that's values based, you know, um, because they're the, the foundation that, that you build from. And people don't do this stuff, Christian, unless they really have to. So once they start um, really getting into the self awareness stuff, all of a sudden they see a different picture of themselves. And for a lot of people, as it was with me and, and, and dozens of hundreds of clients maybe I work with, that when you start doing some of this reevaluation, especially the financial reevaluation, if you're very fortunate, I mean, it depends on what stage of life you are, but if you're very fortunate, you may find that you actually need to earn quite a bit less than you have been earning. And that is a great um, motivation because I thought, well, if I can't earn whatever it was I needed to, running my own business with all my knowledge, all my skills and attributes, there's something desperately wrong. So that's a, a good start point. And then step three is all about uh, what I call establishing your true marketability. And again, this is the challenge for most people, Christian. They haven't got a clue who they are and what they got to offer. Yes, they may know I've got a number of transferable skills, as everyone has, but so what? You know, uh, it's, so it's the, what I call the complete package. It's all about their personal attributes and attitude as well. Uh, in the infamous um, Zig Ziglar, I think it is, quote, uh, your attitude, um, your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. I love that quote. And it's so true, isn't it? You know, and it's back to the, again, um, if you believe you can or you can't, you're right type um, thing, which you've probably heard many times before. So it's all about that. Um, but once you understand more about the skills you have, your attributes, your attitude, your knowledge base, and not just in work, so many clues, hidden talents come out of stuff that people do outside of the workplace, things they do in their own time. And they never actually thought about that you know, they've got some brilliant talents in certain areas. Uh, so it's often things outside of work that um, unlock uh, these sort of hidden talents, if you like. Uh, your achievements in life, uh, your connections. And of course, when you start a business for your own, your connections become fundamental, as you well know. Um, and your strengths and arguably 
your personal brand and understanding personal brand becomes more and more important as we said earlier um you know as you go down the process if you like and once you've done that sort of first three steps and it was my writer's coach who who first alluded to this these are three very definite um personal development steps that most people don't do in general career development but then that leads on to step four which is um exploring opportunities and that's about research it's about networking it's about dipping a toe in the water as i call it maybe a bit of work shadowing uh, a bit of work experience uh, finding out things that maybe you can try finding people who do them a great example i had a client um, uh, about this time last year and um, she basically um, through this process one of the things that came to fruition is maybe she would um, uh, be interested in trying out graphic design. I thought, fabulous. Um, yeah, it's poles apart from what she was doing previously. And what she did, she was networked um, into somebody who, who had their own graphic design company, and she spent a day with them and work shadowed them. And she thought, wow, this is actually something I could do. And she set herself um, a task and challenge to get uh, signed up on a, a graphic design course, which she's now doing. She still has her day job, um, so she's developing that alongside it. Uh, but that's a good example of exploring opportunities, which then links into step five, which is deciding what to do. So if you are going to be, uh, if you decide, yes, I am going to be a business owner, I am going to be my own boss, and I'm going to... Um, do something different, then what is it within that that you're going to do? And really drilling down and establishing those key um, passions. And, and I think where it works best is when you actually really drill down to what you're best at, but what you enjoy the most. Those two have to work in tandem, because that's another thing uh, I realized on my journey. And so many people come to realize, Christian, it's just because you're good at something doesn't actually mean you enjoy it or you actually have to carry on doing it. And that's why so many people resist making this change to becoming uh, breaking free and becoming a business owner. Cause yeah, they're good at something, but so what if you don't enjoy it, you know, get out of there. Um, and, and so, so once you've really drilled down into deciding what you want to do, it might be, that, you, you know, some people it's about potentially buying into a franchise. Everybody's different in terms of what they want to do within a business. It could be network marketing or, a, a, say, a, a collective of things under a portfolio career. And then the all important last step, step six, is taking positive action. Because without that, nothing's going to happen. And that's about following up, following through and having robust action plans to really make things happen. Um, and then keeping that going, keeping that momentum going, because uh, that's the other thing that is so evident in, in this process. It's all about building momentum. And once you get that head of steam up, it's remarkable, isn't it, how suddenly things start to happen. And then that is a chain reaction. And in my Portfolio Careers book, one of the case studies, he talks about creating ripples in the universe and i love that metaphor because that's exactly what it is isn't it yeah. you know you, you do something and then it sort of ripples out and before you know it wow all of a sudden bang something's happened that's very true the ripple effect and uh, we had daniel Priestley speaking at the skate rat race meetup the other week and his company is called dent you know all about putting a dent in the universe as well um, one thing you mentioned, you know, we said about, you know, there's never a right time, but also there's never enough time, you know, everyone's busy. And especially when you're still in that nine to five lifestyle, it can be difficult, can't it, to balance everything together. Um, do you have any quick tips for anyone on terms of managing time, productivity, when you're, you're juggling a full time job and starting a business at the same time? Well, I, I, I think it depends at what stage you are uh, with that, Christian. But um, one of the things, I, one of the great tips uh, I learned from, um, uh, say, my guru, if you like, Brian Tracy, uh, in terms of time management, is to focus on 
what is the consequence of what I'm doing right now? Um, and only to ever focus on maximum three things. So, um, you know, you're one, two and three key things and then just drill down to them. And then once you've got through them, then you focus on a, another three things. So it becomes a, um, uh, it, oy, various people call this the one, two, three approach. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three reoccurring, if you like. Um, and that is interesting because there's a company who developed um, an app a few years ago um, for the corporate world, and they actually use that exact same principle of three things uh, so that um, in terms of people's objectives and their goal setting, they only ever focus on three things. Uh, and, and I think for most people, the biggest problem, like you say, is overwhelm. Uh, and it's so easy to, uh, in fact, it's a great example, um, a, a previous client who's now setting up her own business, um, and she's doing exactly that. She's trying to do everything. She's trying to be all things to all people, as well as going to every uh, personal development event and seminar known to mankind, <laughs> which is admirable, but you basically have to start prioritizing and, um, and focus on what is going to help me move towards my goals. If it's not having any impact, there's a, I use a process called the four C's action planner, uh, which I feature in some of my books. Um, and one of those four C's is cease. And that is the biggest challenge for a lot of people, Christian, because they won't stop doing anything. They, they don't realize that it's actually, um, destructive to moving forward in what they want to do. So anything that is not going to help you move forward towards your end goal of being able to um, set up your own business or, or successfully do that, cease it right away. Yeah. And, you know, once you're in a position where you can start outsourcing things, mm. even better, because yeah. that's, you know, is another key strategy and it's very hard at first you know people get very defensive and i was it's all again that's part of letting go let other people do stuff that uh, they're better at it than you yeah um, it, it, it is difficult and and you know i think we all go through this at that uh, it, during that discovery phase you talk about going to seminars and you know i i'm writing a book as you know at the moment steve and you know, that's my first book how to sack your boss and start a business you love and i talk about <laughs> just, i love it the discovery phase, you know, when you, you, your eyes are suddenly open to this whole new world of personal development and opportunity and you just go crazy, in, you become an addict, you, just yes, consume, you, you consume so much and then you get overwhelmed and then you just don't know which way to turn. And that's where having a good support group, having a mentor, a coach, yes. someone who can look from the outside and say, stop doing that. That's just a waste of time or, you know, it's never going to get you to where you want to get to. And you often don't see that yourself. And that's where having someone to support you can really come in so helpful. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And again, uh, so many people resist um, uh, having a mentor or a coach, uh, you know, especially if they've got to pay for them. But the reality is the return on investment is ultimately well worth um, the, the, well, what you the pain and you and you have to go through if you're doing all this stuff yourself and trying to work through without having an outside an external uh in, influencer is really really challenging it's a very lonely journey if you try to do it yourself whereas it's a much much more uh empowering and and um uh, enjoyable journey if you have a mentor or a coach to work together through that journey. Um, and as uh, you know, it's the old nut again, the, the sum of the whole is greater than the parts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it brings me to the final question, Steve. Uh, you've been a really fantastic guest today, but I'm gonna ask you for your final thoughts for anyone who is listening right now, squashed up on the train, stuck in the traffic jam. They really know that the time has come. They need to take action, need to change but something's holding them back. And it's probably fear, that big fear that we talked about earlier. What's your well, 
piece of advice, Steve, for the, anyone listening right now. Can I just it? read you out a quote from somebody? This is actually in the portfolio. This is the start of the introduction in my portfolio book, which partly please, answers Please it. do, please do. Because it relates just to what you said. And this is absolutely true. This was a phone conversation I had with somebody. As I was sitting on the train heading into London, struggling with the dreadful daily commute, something within me suddenly triggered the thought that there must be a better way to lead my life. Why was I working for other people's visions and goals and not my own? From that moment onwards, I decided to take back control of my life and regardless of other people's expectations of me, focus on work that I love to do and what was right for me. Um, and that then links to the fabulous quote from Steve Jobs, the late great Steve Jobs, who said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And if you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living somebody else's life. Yeah, love that quote. Love that. Well, both of those really, really fantastic. It really is a matter of feel the fear and do it anyway. And yes. that, that, that would be a great book title, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where that came from. So, but, Steve, I mean, that, that is the reality, isn't it? Yeah. It, you know, there are too many people living out other people's visions and goals and ultimately do it yourself. Just yeah. take the leap of faith. It is. It's breaking through the comfort zone and that's not easy to do. But ultimately, the rewards, the cash, everything that you really want is the other side of that comfort zone. That's been said many times and proven yeah. many times. Steve, you have really been a great guest today. For anyone that would love to find out a bit more about some of your processes and your, your, your steps and every way that you can help someone who's in that corporate transition from employee to business owner, where can they find you online? How can they get a copy of your different books? Well, uh, the one-stop shop, if you like, will be my Career Catalyst website, which is stevepreston.thecareercatalyst.com. Uh, all my books are available on, on Amazon. Um, and uh, if people are, are, are on Twitter, I'm at Steve M. Preston. Um, so they're probably the, the best methodologies Fantastic. Well, I'll make sure that all of those links are within today's show notes as well. And if anyone would like to check out the show notes online, then head over to etrr.online forward slash podcast. Steve, I'm looking forward to the next time that we connect and wish you all the best success for the rest of 2018. Likewise. Thank you, Christian. And thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Steve. <laughs>